Mopar and Lowrider, two words that rarely go together. One known for its big, powerful engines strapped into drag racers in the 60s and 70s, and the other full-frame Chevys built for looks rather than performance. But why don't Chrysler and Dodge vehicles get the same lowrider treatment their GM counterparts do? Well, we've had a crazy UK-built 1978 Chrysler New Yorker in the shop for servicing. And in this video, we'll look into why they're not ideally suited to hydraulic suspension conversions, and more importantly, why this one was. Cue the Swarfy intro. I am what I am today, cause I do Now before we get into the car, here's some history. Bought by UK lowrider and Lords Car Club legend Russ Venville back in early 2012, Russ, well known for his off-the-wall base vehicle choices, most notably the Volvo 760 Estate that's been well featured on this channel, and a brown 1976 Lincoln Town Car, both of which still exist to this day. But back to the Chrysler New Yorker. Russ's first thoughts landed in the donk style, coupled with his signature pimp interior touches, and after a full engine rebuild, he sent the car off for some body and paint repairs, which included a custom painted copper flake roof. But Russ, with his past steeped in lowriders and UK lowrider culture, he had to add juice. So off it went to another Lord's lowrider legend, Andy Wall, otherwise known as Chops in South Wales, for a full four link rear suspension conversion and two pump six battery install. With the stock wheels back on and fresh Mr. Whitewall tyres, Chop's work really paid off and the car looked incredible. All that was left to do was to hit the shows, but not long after its completion, Russ decided to sell the car and move on. It's believed that the car was bought by world famous car modifier Andy Saunders, who then sold it to current owner Keith Morgan. Keith has now owned the car for around three years and has since spent a lot of time and money making significant improvements and upgrades. Saved from scrap when he bought it, the frame was basically Swiss cheese and like wet cardboard. So him and his local mechanic friends set about repairing and reinforcing the underside of the car. The 400 cubic inch big block Mopar engine was treated to a stroke crank and comp cam, Edelbrock E Street billet heads, ceramic coated long tube headers, and a Holly Performer four barrel carb. This is all mated to the standard three on the tree transmission. Keith also had a problem with the standard size tires blowing out. So change. so change the wheels and tyres over for some 15 inch standard lace wire wheels and white wall tyres. And that brings us to where we are now, so I'll hand over to Pete in the Lay and Play workshop to talk over the install, the issues found and the Chrysler's crazy frame and suspension combo that explains why these monster Mopars don't tend to get the lowrider treatment. These batteries, oh, let me get a light. So these batteries are the serviceable type which we don't tend to use. You can take these caps off and top up the electrolyte, or whatever it's called, the fluid in there. But the problem with that is they tend to leak, both when you're charging, they can boil over and fizz and you get little patches of battery acid, or if you get topped up a little bit too much when you're hitting switches, fluid can sneak out and you can see on that one there, I charge them overnight and it's fizzed up a little bit and there's a little bit of fluid on there and of course with that being battery acid and this car being made of steel and a lot of the rack and other things the battery terminals and clamps and such like are all steel they will rust but like the battery tie down bars had rusted frame had rusted the battery acid had dripped down into those little corners that's where the accumulators are so it was all rusty down there so after i'd stripped the whole install out the first step was to try and clean as much of that off. It was fully degreased, jet washed, and then it was left for a few days to dry. And while it was drying, we set about rebuilding these pumps. And as we found when we stripped the pumps down, the pump heads are a little tiny. I think they're a number five, which is a CCE pump head with a pressure relief valve that's more ideal for smaller Euro style cars. Um, one of which, had a loose pump head bolt which had led to the seal which you can't replace you can't get any more blowing out so I had to do some hunting around to see what I could find to try and get it as good as possible um, tanks were full of gunge which is typical for an old build the motors were all full of dust from the brushes which is typical so we cleaned all that out rebuilt the pumps 
rebuild these tops, stripped down and cleaned out the, the dumps, so the valves inside, make sure they were all free and working okay. Check valves as well. I've also fitted some end plates because they weren't fitted with end plates and because it's running four accumulators, the tanks do tend to pressurize at full drop. So you have to be careful that the tanks don't blow off. But you can see if I zoom in on this one, you can see where it started to rip the corners of the tabs off. Uh, solenoids were crazy. One of them had a melted link. So the link between the two solenoids had melted and another one of the other solenoids had a big crack in it. That was probably down to them having the wrong thread or at least the, the, the melted link was down to it having the wrong thread. So it's had new solenoids. Uh, the, the trim that was in the car was some leopard skin, fake leopard skin, leopard fur or whatever you call it that had been mounted to either some plastic or some cardboard and then duct taped onto the back. So we ripped all that up, cleaned the trunk floor, as I say, when we did the jet wash down. And then we've trimmed it as best we can with a bit of uh, black fabric, it's a bit dusty in there, to hoover up in there. Also, the spare wheel was mounted so high, it was basically up against the top of the trunk lid. Because although it's a central piece and it's real pretty, it being the original Chrysler hubcap with the uh, gold painted steel wheel behind it. It was mounted really high up and although they were trying to make a centerpiece of it, it became a bit of an eyesore uh, in my opinion. So I cut and shortened the mount, took an old wire wheel adapter to give it something to mount to so it wouldn't be as in your face. I've had all the cabling off it, all the terminals, everything. I've re-sleeved most of the cables which were a bit rough looking. Uh, rerouted the hoses. Another thing that we found on this car that this would have been originally hosed up for side to side rather than front to back, which is not common, but I've seen it done before where this pump would have been for the left side and this pump would have been for the right side. But at some point, somebody's converted it to front to back, which is the best way of doing it, in my opinion. But because of the way that these hard lines for the fronts have been mounted, they've run extra hoses to go from one side to the other as you can see on that one and then there's another hose that runs from this rear accumulator that's underneath that corner runs along the edge of the boot lid now before they were all just lying around in the trunk floor and it looked really ugly i've fitted a uh, powder fire extinguisher which is the correct type Every lowrider should have a powder fire extinguisher nearby, just in case. It came with a good disconnect, so we've left that in there, and it's it's looking much, much better. The hoses that run down the back there, the braided ones, have been rubbing in various places, so you can see just inside there that they've been sleeved with some reinforced tubing, it's plastic tubing with some cable ties just to stop it from rubbing as much. The rear rams have been rebuilt, the seals needed replacing, Everything was loose, so we tightened everything up. We've re-greased the power balls. The front cylinders are brand new anyway. Well, not brand new, but we supplied new front cylinders for it not so long ago. So they were all in good condition. And generally, from a steering, suspension point of view, everything was pretty much tight. There was no obvious damage anywhere. And it was in relative good condition otherwise. So I'm just waiting for this weather to clear up so we can give it a clean. So this is how crazy this car is. So it looks like it's a full frame car. So I'm gonna follow the frame down, you can see it's got a chassis. The chassis continues, this one's been reinforced, so the bottom side has been boxed in. And then there's some more reinforcement plates. And then you get to there and the chassis just stops. But to try and make the car more rigid, it's had some box section welded in. So this box section there has been fitted aftermarket and welded to this section of the, the false chassis, if you want to call it, to try and make it more rigid. And then just after there, the chassis continues again, although it's part of the back end of the car. There's even a body mount inside it there. And then this is the reinforcement that somebody's put on to try and make it more rigid. Which 
goes to there, and then it gets a chassis again at this point. So there's like two or three feet of no chassis. But this part of the frame that runs over the axle, that looks like more chassis, is actually part of the body. So it's it's welded to the body, it's not a separate chassis. I've never seen anything like it, it's crazy. Even from a suspension perspective, it's got a wishbone top. You see, you see the front of this car, you think, oh sweet, it's got a chassis, it's got wishbone suspension, perfect, ideal low rider. But then, you get underneath it, not only is the chassis partial, it's actually a torsion bar suspension. So there's the torsion bar that runs into the lower arm. And the cylinder, there's no coil. So the cylinder is solid mounted. It's rose jointed at the bottom. And then it's, I can't show you that, but it's just got a donut set up against the, the chassis rail there. So no coil. There's a hydraulic ram cylinder, whatever you want to call it. And then this is how the hard lines running down the, the underside of the car. And then on the rear, this has been four linked, but again, no coil to speak of. Solid mount. So it's power ball at the bottom. Power ball at the bottom, and then like a mini donut set up against the, the rear cross member at the back, which has also been reinforced. And then it runs four accumulators, so it's got suspension. Crazy. And that concludes the 1978 Cries in New Yorker video. I'll leave you with a little clip of Keith driving it out of the lay and play workshop when it was all finished. But I'd appreciate it if you leave a like or a, even better, a comment or share the video. Let me know what you think, what we should be filming next. But for now, peace out and have a happy lay and play day.